Number 11. 14 Days of Terror over a 14-day period during September 1984, four separate divers were attacked in the same spot, including professional abalone diver Omar Kongir. Despite feeling completely at home in the ocean and his experience from diving every day for years, Omar fared no better than the other divers who were attacked during this period. And while his diving partner, Chris Rom, managed to escape into a boat when his friends pulled him in seconds before another attack, Neither Kongir nor the other three divers attacked in this two-week period would survive their injuries. Number 10. The 30 Killer Whales A three-man British crew were delivering a luxury yacht from Ramsgate, Kent to Greece when they noticed a pod of 30 killer whales tailing them. The crew, consisting of Martin Evans, 45, Nathan Jones, 27, and an unidentified man, feared for their lives as they lost control of their heading. The orcas repeatedly slammed into their vessel, circling it, and eventually chewed off its rudder. Fortunately, no one was harmed during the attack, and the crew managed to reach the southern edge of Spain. But they were stranded there when authorities deemed the boat unfit for sailing. Still, it's better than having to take their chances in a lifeboat. Number 9. Mating Season Drowning People often forget that you can train wild animals, but you can never truly control them. During a performance at SeaWorld, an orca, in the throes of mating season, refused to allow its human counterpart to leave, repeatedly pushing him under the water. When he attempted to get out of the pool, it nudged him back into the center. It kept this up so long that the man became exhausted, nearly drowning beneath its massive bulk. Fortunately, the other members of his team were waiting on the edge of the pool to help him out, and he survived without any physical injury. Number 8. Lunch Break Lisa Mondi was working as a wildlife tour guide during the time of this attack. She'd gone wakeboarding on her lunch break and missed her board at the worst possible time. Waiting just beneath the surface was a great white shark. And as she plunged into the water, the 13-foot-long shark clamped its mouth around her head and dragged her beneath the surface. The shark tried to drag Lisa down, but she was able to get loose due to her life jacket. Unfortunately for Lisa, that wasn't the end of her ordeal. She survived with grievous injuries. Her neck and face had been horribly mauled, and it took 16 hours of surgery to reattach her arm. Thankfully, Lisa regained all feeling in her arm and has since made a full recovery. Her current job? Get this, working at a shark conservation center. I bet you even Lisa herself wouldn't have seen that coming before the incident. Number 7. Fateful Encounter Beneath the Waves Back in 2004, Randy Fry was out with a friend on a diving trip just off the coast of Mendocino, California, when he had a fateful run-in with a sea predator. The pair were enjoying their time below the waves when their day out turned into a nightmare. A ferocious great white shark swam in through the surf, intent on devouring the two swimmers. It was on them in an instant, attacking Fry without missing a beat. His friend, Cliff Zimmerman, had been trying to swim away, but he stopped when his vision clouded from all the blood filling the water around him. He later said he heard a strange whooshing sound as the shark approached, the sound of its bulk charging through the water. And before he knew it, he was swimming in red-tinted sea. Zimmerman managed to swim to safety, reaching the shore, knowing Fry hadn't made it out alive. He called 911 to report the attack, and the rescue team, sent out to look for Fry's body, recovered it the next day, with the autopsy revealing that the shark had managed to bite his head clean off his shoulders. The bite marks were those of a great white shark, which was how the coroner came to the conclusion that their stealth attacker had been a great white. Number 6. A Life Cut Short at 20 years old, David Lilienfeld, a young man with a whole life ahead of him, was fatally attacked by a shark while on a trip to South Africa with some other surfers. Lilienfeld was just messing around bodyboarding as everyone else chilled out in the water around him when he suddenly let out a terrifying scream before disappearing under the waves. His group tried to help Lilienfeld while getting out of the water at the same time. The shark had him by his right leg, shaking him back and forth, tearing away at the muscle and bone. But it finally let go of him, allowing rescuers to pull him to the rocks and administer first aid. 
Unfortunately, the shark's attack had already done fatal damage to the young man. They were unable to save Lilienfeld's life. The shark didn't immediately leave, either. It continued swimming back and forth by the rocks for over half an hour, pacing for new prey, before it finally swam off and disappeared. Number 5. Saved by Dolphins Todd Indris, also a lifelong fan of the ocean who experienced a nightmare at sea, actually experienced a happy ending. Back in 2007, at Monterey Bay Marina State Beach, Indris was swimming like any other day when a great white shark swam out of nowhere and attacked him. Luckily for Indris, his horrible luck would be followed by what must have felt like a miracle. A pod of dolphins arrived and began pushing the great white shark back just enough for Indris to escape back to shore. By the time the Great White circled back around for him, he was safely on dry land. Even with this gigantic stroke of luck, however, Indris was heavily wounded. He required 500 stitches and 200 staples to close up his torn apart torso. Soon after recovering, he went on the road to share his story with various news outlets. Number 4. The Man Who Punches Sharks Mick Fanning was a professional surfer who'd made it halfway through an event at South Africa when he was attacked by a great white shark. The first unique thing about this attack is that it was captured entirely on video as part of the event. Viewers reported feeling helpless as they watched Fanning get attacked out of nowhere by the great white. Fortunately, Fanning's quick thinking and reflexes put his board between him and the shark. Using it as a sort of shield, he reached over and punched the shark in the back hard enough to send it swimming away. As a result, Fanning sustained no injuries whatsoever during the attack. While many shark attacks are unspeakable tragedies, Fanning's ended up being the tale of a lone badass who took on a shark and punched it into submission without getting a scratch. Number 3. The Argentinian Christmas Attack on Christmas Day of 2013, 70 locals were attacked by a swarm of carnivorous fish at a beach near the city of Rosario, Argentina. Despite the body of water being known as the Paraná River, and officials stating the fish is a relative of the piranha, the president of a local fishermen's association said the likelihood of one of these attacks occurring again was low, and that these particular fish attacking humans was only occasional. While 70 people were injured, no one was killed. Number 2. The Man with the Great White Scar Rodney Fox, a professional spearing fisherman, received a gigantic scar back in 1963 worthy of the beast that attacked him. While off the coast of Australia, Rodney was attacked by a great white shark that would leave a fragment of its tooth in his wrist and which tore the entire left side of his body clean open. It took over 500 stitches to sew him back together, and since then, he has made it his life mission to raise awareness about sharks and shark attacks, filming a number of documentaries themed around them. It's curious that the shark attacked Rodney while he didn't have his trusty spear with him, and it would be interesting to see how things would have played out if he'd been able to defend himself. Number 1. A Mother's Will Valerie Levy and her daughter Sydney were having a mother-daughter day off the coast of New Smyrna Beach in Florida back in March 2012. Both mother and daughter were sitting on their surfboards when the attack occurred. Sydney was yanked into the water, unbeknownst to Valerie, by a great white shark. But seeing her daughter in distress, Valerie pulled Sydney up on her board by the shoulders, determined to save her from whatever had attacked her. However, they were stuck clutching to each other on Valerie's board as the shark circled them, waiting for the opportune moment to strike and make its kill. Luckily for mother and daughter, rescuers reached them before it got the chance, scaring it off. Better yet, Sydney soon made a full recovery. Would you rather get attacked by a great white shark or never be able to set foot outside your house again? Let us know in the comment section below.